If you read these articles um, on The Economist or on, on the mainstream um, international media, they're like, the BRICS is formed to challenge the dominance of the West. But my question, and a question for Ms. Naido is, why shouldn't the, the dominance of the West, uh, why shouldn't it be challenged? Why should the world be dominated by the West? Yeah, I mean, it's the big question that, that sits in the context of where we are and where the BRICS will probably be moving to in the next five, ten years. I think why there's this whole kind of reaction to the BRICS and the provocation that the BRICS will not necessarily be as legitimate or as credible because it represents a system of possible change. So I think it's, it's, it, it comes with a whole lot of questions about what does this mean for us, our own kind of identity in the global arena? What does it mean for our own footprint in the global arena? And so I think it, it, it comes back to the question around uh, what colleagues have been uh, mentioning around what is the world after 1945? Is that world that we had created or the, bre or, or, or the international gatekeepers had created after 1945, it's still relevant, but how relevant is it? And is it still fit for purpose in terms of representation? So I think with anything that emerges as a challenge to a system or as a kind of imp implicit disruption to a system will come with the kind of reaction you're seeing. I think the fact that you're seeing that reaction tells you that the countries of the global north are taking the BRICS very seriously, although they're trying to downplay it with the kind of um, narrative, mm -hmm. rhetoric and reaction.